Oops. Hello everybody, Victoria Cochran here for another Spiritual Wisdom Hour. Hope you're okay and uh, feeling good. And I'm just connecting to my other page as I do because I'm always running late. So, um, and then disorganized, but that's okay. Um, so, hope you're well. And can't believe we're nearly at the end of July. First month of winter done and dusted, only two to go. Ah, big sigh, can't wait for summer. But anyway, we've had actually some nice weather here in Tasmania. I'm Victoria Cochran. I'm on the northwest coast of Tasmania, here in my little room in Wynyard. And uh, here for another spiritual wisdom hour to lead you through meditation, to talk to you about spiritual development and insights into that and to do some readings for you later on from about half past to uh, half past 12. Oh, what have I done? Uh, why? Hello. I don't know what's going on here. why that's like that. Uh, I'm still live I hope. I am, so that's good. Just uh, can't see that I am on. But anyway, I am, so that's good. I'll just turn myself off here and uh, all good. Hello, Barry. Lovely to see you. Um, hello, Sandra. Hello, Melissa. So great to see you. Hi, Michaela. I'm not going... Hi, Charlotte. Great to see you. Hi, Karen. Not going straight into cards. I never do that because I like to just talk a little bit about what's happening in the world, uh, do a meditation and just uh, do general stuff for people who are not interacting um, or asking for cards and then it's just kind of, um, it's an all-rounded kind of session then, which is good. Um, so I have some new cards, Crystal Grid reading cards and so I thought I would do uh, some of these for the collective reading today and they just uh, they're nice they have different crystals um, and kind of formations and messages with them so there's a lot happening isn't there there's a lot of fear at the moment uh, another wave of COVID coming through Australia which is causing a lot of concern. This morning I was on the news for about two minutes and then I, I just can't watch this. Please don't stay immersed in the drama of the media. Honestly, it is happening fine, but we don't need to hang on every word because they just build fear. They surmise a lot and they just want us to be invested in the drama. And uh, all we can do is to stay focused on ourselves breathe, meditate and bring in our guides and ask for help. Hi Kathy, lovely to see you. Move myself over here so that, um, yeah, so hello to Janet and hello to Tara. Yes, crystals are very healing and so um, Wear your crystals for protection, uh, crystal pendants, use some essential oils, but lots of meditation, lots of breathing. And uh, don't just stay informed, but not immersed, because honestly, the fear that it's bringing. Um, and fear around, I'm not making any comments on whether you should or shouldn't get vaccinated, but there's a lot of fear around that as well. So it's just about centering and staying calm. So on that uh, premise, I'm just going to draw three cards from uh, these crystal, uh, crystal grid healing cards, just to ask for perspective on that. Hi, beautiful Catherine. Lovely to see you. 
Um, and then I do have to, to some things to read to you uh, around fear and a meditation to do um, about staying out of fear. And we'll do individual readings from half past 12. So the first one is prosperity. Oh, nice. Green garnet. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful card there of green garnet. Um, and it says prosperity and it's number 20. So I actually have not really used these cards a lot. So I'm going to look up number 20, the green garnet, and tell you what that means. Prosperity, confidence, fertility. So now's the time. A lot of people are stepping into their own gifts. They're thinking of new things that they can do, bringing new ideas into the world, new healing modalities as well. Prosperity, fertility and success. Any form of abundance or success starts with a state of mind. So true. So pay attention to your thoughts. Are you thinking future abundance, which will continue to keep that abundance in the future? Or do your thoughts always turn to the lack of what you have in your life now, which creates more lack? Hi, Emily. You wear your mum's amethyst. Hi, Shani. Um, so I was listening to a snippet of uh, Wayne Dyer on uh, YouTube this morning and he was talking about um, a, a little snippet in the Bible that talks about um, giving thanks for what you have not actually brought into existence yet. And I always say to people, give thanks to the universe for the abundance that you're going to receive as if it's already happened. And that's exactly what he was saying. We bring into existence, he said, people say, I'll believe it when I see it, but turn it around and say, I'll see it when I believe it. And you actually do have to believe that it will be. Belief uh, creates, we create everything based on our belief system and then on our thoughts and what we say. And so if you don't believe it till you see it, you won't see it. So you need to see it, uh, you need to believe it to see it. Hi Sammy, great to see you. Oh, I'll miss you too. Are you going to be in um, Hobart? I hope so, because uh, I think Samantha said, uh, Catherine said you were going to be in Hobart. The Hobart Psychic Expo is on this weekend, and my husband and I are travelling down at Sparrow Fart, pardon the uh, expression, on Friday morning, very early. He can drive, I'll sleep. Anyway, so this means that you can use the green garnet uh, to bring into existence that which you wish to achieve. If you don't have a green garnet, use an energetic one. Actually visualise it, bring it into existence in your hand and meditate on it that way. Green garnet also holds the qualities of red garnet, which is related to success in business. So if you don't have any green garnet on hand, you can either meditate with this card Take a snapshot of it now, snap, um, or you could try uh, or use red garnet, you could try using other green stones with your garnet or use it on a green cloth because green is healing isn't it. It's also the fifth ray so it's of scientific knowledge and logic and of bringing into existence uh, the machinations of your mind um, or you could use a clear piece of quartz and ask for the green garnet healing energy to come through it. There's always a way. There's no restrictions. So I love that. That's awesome. So if you're hoping to uh, bring into existence or manifest new business of some kind, thank the universe for it happening already and uh, use a green garnet or energetically use a green garnet through another stone. Um, to to make that happen. Hi Danielle, nice to see you. Yes Marcelo, bring that dog into existence. Bring in a bigger home for the dog to be in existence with a backyard. Go for broke. Have a visualization board and just you know because the more you're the more focused you are the more you bring it in and you need to believe that it will happen. This one a joint number 29 compassion a lot of it's a smaller stone 
So uh, compassion, we need to have compassion for ourselves and other people um, because everybody has their story, even people that we really don't like have their own story and goodness knows what they've been through. So to actually just be a lot more objective about what's going on with other people and to just have compassion doesn't mean you have to like them just means that you need to open your heart to being compassionate and being compassionate for yourself so stop giving yourself a hard time everyone out there um, and a joint pronounced a hoit okay a hoit a ho a hoite okay a hoite is not a joint a hoite is a very high vibrational crystal you may be in need of some guidance, especially if you're a light worker. Use a hoite when you need to tap back into the source and seek answers on a higher spiritual level. It elevates you to a realm where you can communicate freely. Uh, where you can communicate freely with spirit, then aids you in communicating this information on the earth plane with compassion. A stone of spirit communication. It is perfect for spiritual teachers. I'll have to get myself some. Hello to Belinda. Uh, oh no, you're going to Launceston. Okay, thank you. Um, having compassion for another means you have reached a level where you can see a situation for what it is. You see the bigger picture and so many people are not seeing the bigger picture. I actually, the bigger picture for me is ascension. Okay, in all of this coronavirus hoo-ha, <laughs> The biggest, the bigger picture is ascension and people fighting that and, and other people fighting to keep us fighting it. And the more that we raise our vibrations and the more that we send love and compassion to the world and the more that we work on ourselves and just be the best we can be, um, the better off the world will be. And that's all we can do. That is the bigger picture. So all of the low vibrational stuff that's going on Yes, it's a reality, but the more we invest in the fear, the more we get caught up in really dangerous dogma and other people's agendas. And let's just rise above that. Let's take precautions, whatever that means for you. But let's just not invest in it, okay? Observe it. Archangel Michael talks about us being an observer and of just sending love. It's like people make decisions and we can't intervene on that. But we certainly can send love, we can send compassion and we can uh, really work to keep our vibrations so high that we're sending that out all the time. That's all we can do. Thank you, Jason. It's a rather expensive stone, a hoite. If you don't have a piece, you can still draw on its energy by asking for its help. Remember, there are no boundaries when working energetically. We are all connected and need only call on the energy we need for its help. The number um, that it fell on, 29, 2 plus 9 is 11. It's a master number. So that's a great card. So, so far I've drawn prosperity with a green garnet and a hoite which is compassion. And the last one for all of you is rebirth. Oh, fantastic. Uh, Menelite, number 22, another master number. So Menelite, never heard of any of these stones, but that means nothing. Uh, rebirth, lover's heart. Menelite is a stone of rebirth. A metamorphosis is happening and so is on the earth, isn't it? Even if you do not understand what it all means now, thank the universe for the opportunity for growth. With great change comes great reward. A new way of living, a new way of thinking, even a new lover, maybe your soulmate. Menelite looks like a lump of clay being moulded. does actually. Um... And so we too can undergo this kind of transformation. It can feel like everything has been tipped upside down. Thank you for the stars, Sandra. Um, 
and she says she always has her black tourmaline on her, a fantastic stone. Um, we can feel like everything has been tipped upside down and you don't know which way is up, but out of the clay a new form will appear. This form can remain the same or it can also be remodelled again and again. It's up to you. It's up to you if you want to remain in this new shape or you can keep growing and changing as many times as you like in your lifetime. And that's what we have to do, don't we? Just, just don't become stuck <coughs> being something you're not. Let change happen and see what you become. Morganite and aquamarine make a perfect combination of blue and pink, male and female, for attracting new love into your life. They form an equal union of the masculine and feminine, or balance just like in the yin and yang symbol. It is such a gentle stone, and if, ever, if you ever come across a piece, carry it on you. You will feel love wherever you go. So that's a, a beautiful card, isn't it? Um, so there we have prosperity, compassion and rebirth messages for us uh, today where a lot of people are in lockdown and in fear of everything that's been projected out into the world at the moment. So I do just want to get myself into gear. First of all, what have I got? Where have I put everything? Right here. Um, so I do show this book a bit, but I, I'm really hoping that people who have bought this book are enjoying it and uh, using the meditations to help to transmute some of the lower energies that are manifesting in our physical bodies at this time. Um, I wonder if some of you have seen the meditation that I put out on the Spiritual Events and Directories newsletter that Pip Coleman puts out every month. We get a message around about the 20th going, Hello ladies, it's that time again. I need your meditations, your readings, etc. So that one was about fear and it was uh, the, the uh, theme of the month and it seems kind of uh, that it is the theme of the month to be in fear. But I just want to read to you some of the chapter um, around coronavirus. Uh, it's called The Attack on the World and the Masters make no bones that it has been an attack but that it's a call for us to actually rise above and um, really strengthen our connection to uh, the love of the universe and to the all because corona means crown. So it's actually an attack on the crown chakra and our connection to spiritual help. They are a beautiful death, Danielle. Um, they're called the Crystal Grid Reading Cards by Nicola McIntosh, so that's them there by Rockpool Publishing, if you would like to find those. I got them in one of those book club boxes that you get at schools and businesses that sit on the desk and ask you to kind of rifle through when you order them. Hi Lisa, great to see you. Thank you for coming on. Okay, so uh, this some of this chapter says, uh, in 2020, illness has swept the globe and many people have died. Many countries have gone quickly into financial recession with some countries gaining power while, while others flounder. Will the earth recover? Is there hope for the future? The world is under attack and many people are living in fear and dread. However, not as all as it seems, nor is it as bad as it may feel on the surface. Whilst it may seem that the new wave of terror, terrorism is COVID-19, the real culprit is fear itself, for people are much easier to control when they feel that their lives are at stake. Despite doubt, this global attack did not happen by chance and equates to chemical warfare. There have been many mistruths and smoke shields thrown out by the media and the instigators alike, but the masses are awakening and can no longer be manipulated as much as has been the case in the past. Great change is upon the earth and nothing will be or can be as it was. This is not to be feared, for the changes will bring about many blessings, despite the losses that have been incurred, for which we send our condolences and comfort. 
It is time to shed the fear and any anger you may feel at the terror that has been unleashed on the world, for the only saviour of the world is love, which can only be expressed when the fear is vanquished. It is time for the old ways of doing, believing and being to be released. Many people talk about the new normal, but let us tell you this. If humanity were to remain on its current path, it would be writing its own death warrant. Ascension has been ongoing for much longer than was projected because so many people have ignored the signs. Hello, Efrasini. Lovely to see you. Uh, thank you so much. Beautiful. I hope you have a beautiful day too. Enough is enough. It is time for change. So this is the Masters making, making no bones about anything. Any change comes from necessity because nothing can change unless the old patterns of behaviour are released. The intent to change must come from the heart and mind, not just one or the other. For instance, a person can know that they need to make a change, yet never follow through because their heart is just not in it. On the other hand, a person can really want to make a change, but their mind holds them back through fear, belief or lack of it. Only when their heart and mind are aligned will a person be able to truly embrace change with intention, purpose and determination. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. Well, there you go. Great minds think alike. So it is with the ascension of the planet at this time. Never before has there been such an awakening of the masses and an urgency felt by so many that change is necessary and so imminent. With lockdown still at hand, which it was at this time, but it, it, it is again now, in many cities around the world at the time of writing, the loss of freedom has brought about an epiphany for many that life on earth is a gift not to be wasted. When the playground of earth was not available for play, the reality that life as we know it must change finally made itself felt. I love that sentence. What has this pandemic been about, you may ask? Is it retribution for human behaviour that discounts the cost of human life above ego? Or is it a slap on the wrist from Mother Earth for mistreating her so badly? Perhaps it is a warning of the possibilities of infection and how life on Earth could be decimated by disease so easily. In the energy of duality and separation from the source of creation, it is all of these things. However, in the energy of oneness, and unconditional love, the higher source of energy, it is merely a consequence of the choices humans make with their free will. These choices fly against spiritual law and create karma as well as disharmony, disequilibrium, disconnection and distance amongst souls whose spirits are all one with the light of source. The ramifications of being disconnected from the unconditional love of creation to a soul are many, including dis-ease, social imbalance, and a world that is so far from the Christ consciousness of love, tolerance and peace that it cannot continue to exist in the way it has in the past. Low vibrations of ego, such as self-service, hatred, fear, revenge and anger will only manifest more of the same, making the physical body much more susceptible to succumbing to disease illness or imbalances in the many systems and functions of the body. Any illness or pain in the physical body has emotional links and ties to past trauma. The pandemic sweeping the globe is born out of ego, hatred and spite and fed by a wave of panic akin to those in days gone past. However, the difference now is that the media and the internet carry and spread lies, fake news, falsities and fear mongering faster than they spread information and truth. At this moment, truth and lies are mixed up in a soup that is confusing, with which, which has an energy-like treacle, which will ensnare people and keep them chained to the lower vibrations, should they allow it. Should they allow it. So don't allow it. The word corona means crown in Spanish. Whether the virus has infected individuals or not, the resulting mass disconnection from the creator of all that is and his or her unconditional love in those who have uh, succumbed to the fear means that the virus has lived up to its name. It has attacked the crown chakra of these people and shut down their spiritual defences. 
Connection to the source of creation gives humans access to their spiritual, etheric body and to the knowing that all in the world is connected by universal love. And we're not talking religion here. It hasn't anything to do with religion. This knowing is the saviour of the human spirit, which would otherwise be grounded in physical realities and anchored to third dimensional energy without respite. When the spirit remembers its connection to the light and love of source, it will act as a spark of hope in the consciousness of the individual, leading the person to meditate, connect to the light and to seek out higher guidance with positivity and hope. Without this connection, all hope can seem lost and the tendency for the person to sink into fear, anger and similar toxic emotions will be a far greater threat. So, take the time to reunite yourself with your own company and reacquaint yourself with your loved ones. Meditate, pray and play. Embrace the world as your cocoon as you integrate the energies of ascension into your heart, mind, consciousness and being. The emergence has already begun. So that is a channel from Lord Sananda and Lady Nada, pretty powerful stuff. And this is a book that I have channeled and uh, is available on Amazon and other um, online booksellers. It's $24. If you get it off my website, it'll be $24 and $9 postage, but you might get it cheaper online. And Belinda Smith says she has this book and she loves it so much. So I, I just think it's... Uh, it's pretty powerful and it's just a reminder that, uh, you know, we are being manipulated and uh, we're being manipulated in many, many different ways by many groups of people and that we just need to come back to source and source is within all of us and that's, uh, that's the main message that I want, want to give you and uh, to actually just really breathe and I, I you know I could do a meditation now but time is moving on but if you can just imagine a beautiful infinity sign which is the uh, sign of the Christ consciousness and just breathe in and out and see it as golden and draw this beautiful infinity symbol as you breathe in and out and just focus on that and just bring in love and light and breathe out the fear and as you're doing it you could actually stop and just uh, bring in that beautiful still point of creation of love and just breathe that in and breathe out the fear and breathe in and just open your heart to love and compassion and you can just do that you know, just for a few short moments a day or a few times a day when you're feeling a bit stressed and overloaded and just really breathe your energy down and ground and just be. And, um, and then just connect to Creator, the universe, your angels, whoever it is you ask for help from and just give that permission for them to help you and to guide you for your highest and best and in the highest and best way and believe that it will happen. Belief is everything. I seem to be cutting in and out a bit today. I'm not too sure why. I might just, hopefully my connection's happening. Um, but anyway, uh, hi Linda, lovely to see you. Um, Thank you, Tara. That's great that you're online today. Uh, yes, so I'm just going to do some messages from people now. Um, draw some cards. I'm just also going to check my connection because it seems to be popping in and out. So just bear with me.
sorry, I think it seems to be there, but if I'm dropping in and out, I do apologise. I'd like to do my first reading for Marcelo today, if he gives permission for that, to see about the future, perhaps with a dog or a job or anything beyond lockdown. <laughs> um, Charlotte, if you could just let me know if that's okay. So I met Marcelo and Charlotte, oh Marcelo was still very young, in Launceston at a psychic expo years ago. And uh, they're up in Brisbane now, but still very faithful clients and lovely friends. And uh, so um, let's just do that. He's listening. So let's do that. Um, Thanks for letting me know that it's clear. Perhaps I'm just dropping out for myself as long as you guys can um, can hear me okay. So this is the energy oracle cards and uh, just going to pull a card for lovely Marcelo who's about 15 now up in Brisbane. I think, I don't know how old was he, Charlotte, when we first met, six or something. Okay, so pulling three cards. So the first one is that you're all always connected and that you have strong intuition, Marcelo, and that you, thank you for the stars, uh, and uh, just really just uh, keep putting out to the universe, praying, uh, bringing Jesus, he's with you very strongly. And see this, when you believe in financial constraints and that you'll never be able to afford anything, um, that's the case. But when you believe that things can change, you bring in abundance. So just thank the universe for bringing in a job that pays well, for bringing in a dog that you can love or for bringing in a house that's bigger, whatever it is you want, and then just believe it and put it out every day. I'm not saying it's abracadabra, but it is actually bringing in the, uh, the law of attraction that actually puts out, when you put that out to the universe, it comes back to you and you put out gratitude and belief. And so it, it's letting go of, we don't have enough, to thanking the universe for what you have already. Sorry, that one. Even if it doesn't seem very much, when you're grateful for what you have, you open up the doors to have more. When you are in lack or believing that you don't have enough, then you'll never have enough because that's what you believe in. Do you understand? So it, it's really as simple as changing your thought processes from a glass half empty to a glass half full. And suddenly all the possibilities are there. So a special one for Marcelo today. And doing one for, uh, he was four. Oh my goodness. <gasps> That's a long time ago, isn't it? Known you guys a long time. Okay, and one for Charlotte. It looks like Salote, but I know that it's Charlotte. Um, and ho hello to people who are on my page too. Um, dropping cards left, right and centre. But Charlotte, this one dropped out. So new beginnings coming for you. The sun, so a new beginning, um, that's good. And for, for you, you know, that little reading I did for you the other day, I think that's actually, there are new things coming for you to allow you to um, be able to do the things that you would like to do beyond being locked down. <laughs> but um, that's a great card for you. So, awesome. Sandra Martin, any guidance for me, please, and thank you. Yes, of course. So, I'll pull a card for you, and I'll just tune in to you, Sandra, if that's okay. You seem to have blockages, but it's not your blockages. It's you feel feeling kind of blocked by something or someone else. 
um, possibly your husband or a male in your life who's just being pretty negative about things. Um, it's almost like fear and anger um, and it's kind of in your face and it's hard to get past. Mm -hmm. um, oh, or perhaps it's worry about a person in your life and you don't know if he's right for you. But this is a 33, so just need to unlock that door between you of anxiety and, you know, um, misunderstanding. And uh, it's a 33, so it's a master number. So things are on track, it's just sometimes there's illusion. Oh, okay, there, now there's a broken heart. Let me read further into this. Mm. Okay, I feel that you're being blocked off by someone and that it's his stuff and that's causing miscommunications. But uh, just a little bit of uh, communication and um, finding each other on the same page might be helpful. Um, also for him, it's pride. For, you know, so it's grounding back into who you both are. Maybe you need to work on your stuff first, separately, before you can come back together. And quite often that's the way. It's, you know, that insecurity that we all have about whether we're good enough or anything like that. Um, so, now Tara, how can I know for sure? You must have asked the question before. Uh, um, so, I need to go back to see, did you... I was destined to be part of the thread. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by that, Tara, so if you can let me... Oh, what stone is that? I don't know. Janine Brody, how are you? Lovely to see you. Yes, you can. Um, Catherine, you asked me a question, and I haven't answered it yet. Um, what you asked me about, it goes up and down like a yo-yo, but the last couple um, at that expo have been really good for me. Um, but it just depends. Fridays are generally a bit slow. Uh, the rest of the weekend can be pretty good. They've been building better. Yeah, so that, I hope that answers that question. Um, these cards are lovely. Uh, okay, this is for Janine. Oh, there's that for you too, Janine, about new beginnings and uh, starting to see the sun again and also growing new gardens. But the water lilies is love and water is emotion and maybe starting to see outside of everything that's been happening and starting to broaden your horizons and starting to see the bigger picture and giving thanks for that. So building appreciations, writing a new story, get out of the old story, get into the new story. So um, hoping that helps uh, for you. But if you'd like more clarity, just let me know. Um, Catherine. These energy oracle cards are by Sandra and Taylor. And I do use them quite a bit. Um, knowing Catherine now can give her a bit of a um, plug for her new business, Highest Good Healing. Your, your Highest Good Healing. Yes, Your Highest Good Healing. There you go. Um, and uh, she has an aura machine. I'm happy. I'm looking forward to having my aura photo taken. Um, okay, so all right, so all systems go for you, Catherine, now because this is the seventh chakra, Archangel Uriel, but now you're really connected through your crown. And what you told me the other day about what you channeled and 
the symbol that came through and everything. Oh my goodness. So really just stay connected, grounded and keep meditating and just be in flow because it's all coming in. Nothing more to know, really. <laughs> That's awesome. Kathy Booker, Brooker, sorry, would love a card. Thank you. No problem. Just tuning into Kathy. Patience. Okay, so it just seems that there's something that you want to get off the ground, but it's still not happening. But a one and a six is seven, and a seven is the highest spiritual number there is. It's like it's an amazing, it's like crown chakra number. So you're on the right track. You just need to wait for everything to flow, to be in flow, and you can see that the changes that you're happening and and the changes that you're making and the things that have gone on are actually having an impact. It just might seem like things are taking a while. Um, <laughs> yes, yeah, so uh, if I just ask a bit more about that. Um, you might be waiting on other people to kind of get their act into gear and that can be frustrating. But there's lots that you can do still to grow and learn and to be ready for whatever it is you're trying to put into place. So can you see like the dress? It looks like it's it's winter, but actually it's spring already in this card and everything is white. So your intentions are pure and everything's ready to go. It will happen. Just, uh, just yeah, there's the crown chakra again, Kathy Booker. So everything is ready to go and it won't be too long. Just be really patient. There's the sixth chakra, um, Archangel Metatron. So the magic's about to happen. Just breathe and be in flow because it's a bit like watching a kettle boil. You're welcome. Okay, Jeanette Bell, how are you? Um, thank you, Jason, for that. Would love a card. Here's Jeanette. Trying to get through as many as I can. Envy. So, Jeanette, I wonder, let me just uh, tune into you. It might seem that uh, you're not doing enough or that uh, other people are achieving more than you, but I, I see actually a beautiful light over your head that means that uh, you are actually starting to create what you want to. It's just taking a little while and I think your chakras need a bit of a balance and clear and your belief systems might need a little bit of a tweak because you keep yourself trapped when you think um, the grass is greener or whatever it is or even just uh, doubting yourself, keeping yourself trapped. So. Oh, I wonder if it's envy about a man <laughs> um, and if that's the case, you need to do something about it. Uh, not sure, just give me some clarity over that because uh, Jeanette, I wonder if it is about, um, sorry I shouldn't have asked. Oh, that's interesting. Um, there's a few messages I'm trying to get through and so I'm, it, it's to do with a relationship, this card for Jeanette and uh, it might just seem that um,
he's giving his attentions to other th things or people. So you're actually um, a bit stranded. I don't know. I feel that uh, you need to get yourself untrapped and just ask question and take take action and then you'll know one way or the other. A lot of misunderstandings can occur when we just think something's happening but we don't ask the question or we don't actually take action on it and then we become a victim when we really we could be making beautiful change for ourselves. So I just feel get out of the closet and just make yourself known and bring something into uh, Bring, bring it all to the fore and then you'll know one way or the other. Um, and Tara says she's proud of Kathy, which is great. Hi Lorelou, lovely to see you. Diane, um, would love a general reading should you feel guided. Um, my energy <sighs> needs to happen sometimes. Here we go. Diane Morgan, the temple path. So sometimes we can get trapped. If you see the labyrinth down the bottom here, we can feel like we're going round and round in circles and just kind of get stuck in lower vibrations. And so this one is about raising your vibrations, having a chakra clearing, and always trying to see the bigger picture and the positives in things so that you don't get trapped down the bottom of the stairs. <laughs> um, and so whatever it is, it might be the COVID situation, whatever it is, it's, it's just about always bringing yourself up. But I do feel like you need a bit of a clearing and a grounding and perhaps just uh, be able to take a step back and um, not be immersed in things for a while. Um, I'll do one for Lisa, um, Lisa and John. Whom I had the pleasure of meeting on video the other day, which was beautiful. So it was very, I'm very excited always to meet people who are followers on here and uh, that was lovely. Um, deceit. Hmm. Not sure, going to pull another clar uh, clarifying card for that one. So we can actually sometimes think that we don't have enough or that we don't have, an, we're not earning enough. It's, it's, a, it's about uh, materialism, it's like pentacles so it's wondering it, it could be about finances but it could also be about um, anything to do with your physical existence because red is always physical but I'm just going to pull another one okay so whatever it is that's keeping you feeling like something's not right or that you don't have enough or that you're not good enough you need to love yourself enough to walk away from those thoughts <laughs> um, because uh, yeah this is about you and what you think about yourself Lisa um, you don't see yourself um, in you don't love and accept yourself always M mainly perhaps based on the judgments of others a lot of it could come from childhood whatever it is now you need to just love and accept yourself and shut the gate on that and start to work on your self-love and acceptance and your confidence and just let go of anything from the past that is holding you back from that and you can use the orange energy to help you do that because the more we love and accept ourselves, the stronger we are and the better that is for the world um, and for, the, for uh, your relationships and for, for everything. It just, it, we change our perspective, we change our lives, change our thinking. So hopefully that's helpful for you. 
Um, thank you. Hi, Kerry. Um, I'll just pull one for Laura Lou. Hey, Sal. How are you doing? That's my sister, Sally Target. Um, I'll pull one for you too, Sal. I'll just do one for... Um, I'll pull one for um, Laura Lou. Daughter values, so uh, don't shortchange yourself on thinking of what you're uh, worth, not just monetarily, but loving and accepting yourself and being as important as anybody else. And when you open the door to that, then new opportunities emerge. So um, it's not just about earning money, it's loving and uh, accepting ourselves as equals and um, as one. Um, but let me just pull a clarifying card. Um, oh, okay. I get it now. I think you're giving too much and, and you're out of balance because, you, Laura Lou, you're not actually receiving as much as you're giving. So you do need a bit of a rest and rejuvenation. Ask to go to a temple of light. Bring in your archangels. Ask for a healing. Do some meditation. Breathe and ground and get back to you. And... Uh, Heal your side of relationships by just strengthening your self-confidence, letting go of anything that's holding you back in terms of relationships or how you see yourself. Um, and uh, just take some time to do some healing for yourself because I think you're a bit flat and a little bit... Uh, uh, you've just given too much. So... Hi, Case. How are you going? Uh, Casey is my beautiful niece. Okay, so I'll do a, a, a card for Sally. Um, they're not in lockdown because they're in Melbourne, <laughs> but they were in lockdown. Um, goodness, swings and roundabouts at the moment. Here we go. We must have a, a phone call tonight, Sal. I've been thinking about you and haven't said hello to Luke yet. Okay, cool. Um, thank you. I will. So one for Sally. So Sal's my sister. I'm the eldest. She's the youngest and we have a brother in between. Um, here we go. Here's Sal. This is 7th Chakra Archangel Uriel, number 41. So you might be feeling a little bit blocked at the moment <laughs> and uh, a little bit disconnected perhaps um, and stuck in a rut but I know you're about to start holidays um, so or perhaps you're in holidays I lose track of Victoria but purple is the highest healing colour so um, perhaps I'll send you some healing later uh, can I just tune in There's a fair bit of emotion around you. It's been a bit of an emotional time. Um, yeah, just a bit of a healing in your solar plexus and, and sacral of uh, feeling more empowered. I, I wonder if you're just feeling a bit drained and a bit disempowered and a bit kind of everything's up in the air a bit. Um, Asking Uriel to give me a message for you. I know you walk the dog <laughs> and get out in the fresh air, but a little bit more walking, a bit more exercise. And I wonder, are you still down at Rye? Maybe just, um, yeah, when, you, when you're when you doing that, just breathe and connect and bring yourself back to you and just um, just be aware of how beautiful everything is around you. I feel like you've just got a few blockages that need lifting, but let me just yin and yang. So, yeah, a bit of settling in um, when, 
you know, at the time, yin and yang is, so, you know, Luke's come home and so things are a bit up in the air. But just take practical steps to, um, you know, make sure that you uh, look after yourself and do things for yourself and that you can uh, you be in the driver's seat and just call me if he needs another clearing or anything. I hope that makes sense. I'll talk to you more about it tonight. Um, thank you, Nicole. Um, thanks, Laura Lou. Yeah, no worries. Just about getting balance, getting yourself back in balance. And I think everybody's been back out of balance because this is for Sally, out of, you know, COVID and lockdown and work and you know, all of that. So things take time. Um, one for Casey. Mm. Yin and Yang. You also need a bit of a balancing out too, um, Case, because you work a lot. Um, my niece is a midwife and uh, so proud of her. But, you know, just getting yourself back in balance after uh, night shift and everything like that. And perhaps I wonder too about uh, people at work and, and things not always being on an even keel. And perhaps you need to be more assertive there or take a step back one or the other. But it's just about, yeah, feeling confident I feel it's you being needing to be more assertive and more confident in your abilities because you are amazing and uh, you just need to ground into yourself and be really and less anxious about things if you are because um, you do an amazing job and look how far you've come. So it's just about getting yourself back in balance however you can, sleep as much as you can but also go for walks, do things you enjoy, catch up with friends and try to see things with more positive light so that you can start to feel more empowered to create change because when we're tired we can be, you know, we focus on the negatives so case, you know, just, just uh, do take time for you and eat, I know you eat healthily, I know you drink lots of water but just uh, don't allow yourself to be undermined by other people and start to see yourself with a lot more confidence. And when you do that, you uh, don't allow, you. when you don't judge yourself and you see yourself uh, with strength and confidence and love and acceptance, then other people will do the same because that's what you're putting out. So go girl, write some affirmations around the house, you know. <laughs> Some really positive ones, not they can all get stuffed ones, you know, just uh, yeah, positive ones about yourself. Okay? Love to you both and I'll talk to you tonight. So Nicole, I do have time and I'll pull one for you and then I will have to go because, uh, yeah. Um. Cola Cole over in America and uh, a lovely follower. Indecision. Has this one come up for you before, Nicole, that you're at a bit of a crossroads and you don't know which way to go? And your family, you know, they perhaps are very caring but also quite judgmental. Um, but, you know, just just take the high road and take the light horse, the white horse, the light horse, and just um, take the lead. Be in charge, take the lead, make a decision and go with it and back yourself. And, uh, you know, uh, the universe will catch you. you. See the bird flying above there? The universe has you back. So um, just be confident and... Uh, Love yourself enough to do what you need to do. Okay. I love you guys. I really have to go now. Um, Tara, I'm just going to pull a card for you. Um, I 
we all have struggles, but the more that we can just uh, really just bring ourselves back to us and take off everybody else's expectations, take off everybody else's judgments, take off the worry of the world and just breathe and bring ourselves back to you. It, it, it's really so important to be able to do that. Um, and if you're in lockdown, make yourself a nice little meditation space or a place to read your book or somewhere where you can just do that. Um, even if the place is really small. Oh my goodness, Tara, this has uh, come up again for you. Indecision. How can I know for sure? How can you know for sure? You meditate and you take your mind away because the mind is a big trickster and the mind will tell us things that we don't believe, you know, or things that we... mind will tell us to believe things that really aren't true and or are mistruths. And so it's just about taking your mind out of it and just breathing and uh, relaxing and working through the challenges uh, and do that in a methodical way so that you can start to just uh, prioritise what you need to give energy to and what is really not worth doing. And uh, put all your worries into a crystal or to the angels and begin to think with your heart and feel with your heart and know the answer. Uh, and then things will come up because when we think we block ourselves and we block the flow and then we second guess and we undermine ourselves and it's a downward spiral from there really so much love to you all I'm just going to pull a light workers card to finish um, as a message to all of you Okay, so this one's Dark Night of the Soul and I think this is pretty um, appropriate for how people are feeling now. Lots of fear and feeling like they don't have a voice and feeling like uh, everything's just too much. But when we bring in the light and we actually start to think, see things from the light perspective and from the positives and actually start to make affirmations and ask for help and put out our gratitudes and to actually connect to our guides and to meditate. And I'm not telling you to do this every day and sit on a lotus flower and do the OM for three hours, but to be aware of yourself as an etheric being who has um, access to your guides and angels and who actually has no limitations uh, in the universe as to what you can do as long as it's within spiritual law and um, you know that that can actually change your life and create better things in your life and it's it's as powerful as a thought that says I can instead of I can't <laughs> so on that note I'm going to love you and leave you and I am Victoria Cochran I've got my contacts um, my website and my Facebook page uh, in the details at the top. Um, but I'm very contactable. I'm here in Northwest Tasmania, but I do uh, healings and readings online, on video. Um, and much love to all of you, and I'll see you next week. Bye for now. And And hopefully I will be going by for now.